Alrighty, so we're gonna just get started. It's 12 or 11 Nothing. Okay. So anyway, welcome to Let's Meet Let's Players. Um, I want to start by asking anybody out there, is anybody a Let's Player? Okay. Have you just started? How how long have you been around? I've been doing this ever since 2006. <laughs> I have been uh, in the game ever since YouTube started getting big. Um, I follow inspirations from other uh, Let's Players. Uh, the first Let's Player I watched was uh, a guy named Cloud8745. His real name is Aaron, he lives in Ohio. Me and him are close friends. And I watch other people like Markiplier, Jacksepticeye. I watch uh, Game Grumps. I yeah! Yeah, Game Grumps! <laughs> and, and hey, you know what? Aaron, the, Aaron's, home, Aaron's home state, Florida. This he hates state, it though. <laughs> That's Unfortunately, correct. he hates he al it. He's also not allowed to leave California anymore, because Susie said. <laughs> um, um, who else raised their hand? How long have you guys been around? Um, I've, been all, I've been really focusing on the Let's Play since about the past couple of years. I, used, uh, I was a, I've been starting the, my channel about, three, uh, like about four or five years ago. Okay. Excellent. Then I started really focusing on gaming let's plays the except the past couple of years not a very nice welcome and i i try to do like a variety of games mainly rpgs because oh, i find that not many rpg gamers out there that i've seen we have our fun share of rpgs don't we don't no <laughs> we've played them though i just don't remember the word fun being Ooh, How about you? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry? Yeah. You said you said fun wasn't being used, so this is gonna be a boring panel. Man, I'm gonna. No, play. during RPG, when we play RPGs, it's not fun for me. Oh, I have fun. Misery. Like, King, <laughs> like Kingdom Hearts, lovely game. Yeah, everybody oh, yeah. should buy it. <laughs> Which one? Buy it and all of them. How long have you been around? Uh, I s I watched. Um, Chugga Conroy is my first Let's Player ah, when I was okay. really young trying to figure out how to beat Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door because I'm a terrible gamer, but I've gotten a little better. Uh, I started my channel as a music channel originally okay. six years ago. I still do music, but I started live streaming video games on Twitch nowadays. And I like my RPGs on the computer because it's cute. Okay, and one more person raised their hand. How long have you been around? Uh, first time because I wanted to try Let's Play for a long time. Okay. Because ever since I saw the Game Grumps, mm -hmm. but team, I like ecstatic uh, team of Aaron and John Tron. Because John Tron is my idol. I want to do like a game review for that one. I'm inspired by him. Okay. And then that, I'm going to do a Let's Play for most people who uh, my friends want to play. And I've been thinking of a name for this one called Unite Gaming and my mom kind of likes it. I like it. Yeah. Uh, it's something it, as long as it's something original and that's kind of funny how we started because there are like 5,000 pineapple gamings but we're the only one with you know Active. over uh, 10 videos. We actually have, are about 500. This is true. Um so our second birthday, I'll introduce ourselves now. Uh, we're pineapple gaming. Our second birthday is going to be this Sunday, the 6th. Woo. So, yeah. Woo. Happy Woo. Us. Good day. Are you doing a birthday bash here at Metrocon? Ah, yes. I mean, we're going to be relaxing by the pool at our hotel because... Because you can bring that thing, the switch, that you can never find anywhere. You can bring that by the pool and bury it there if you want. Very We'll party like a pineapple. Party like a pineapple. Yeah, so, really nice. um, other than that, if anybody doesn't have any questions for us, we can get started. Well, I, well, I mean, we're pineapple gaming, but this is Bizquits. Hi! My name is Biscuits. My real name is Gabby. Um, long story short, my name in high school was Biscuits. I tried to be unique and came up with Biscuits, and I've been that ever since. So, funny enough that you mentioned um, you started Let's Play and then uh, music. I started with a Let's Play, and I just recently started a cover, um, covering music and stuff like that. So, that's fun. Um, other and than that, I'm just me. <laughs> and and I, I'm Chaos. I, uh, my real name's John. And I don't have a fun story for that. I'm just super edgy. And uh, I in enjoy video games, always have. And Gabby's probably my best friend. So it's been really easy to just, you know, hang out, play games. Might as well record it and put it on the internet. Because who doesn't love to put things on the internet? Everybody um, to see and laugh at you. 
Yeah. And you know, I've been growing. You know, she's been doing the music. I've been growing in a different direction, uh, hosting other panels about common rider and making content about that. But that's not what we're about here today. Go to the panel Saturday. Five. At, at five. I almost said six. So if you're interested, all of our social medias, YouTube's information is right here, and I know it's on the TV screen. We're fine. <laughs> I just want you to know that it's so, um, for the people who are starting out, um, we're just going to go through what we went through because we're still a relatively new channel. We're celebrating our two-year birthday in a couple of days. So I just wanted to tell everybody, hey, this is what we've done. Maybe it'll work for you and, you know, try to give you a step in the right direction. So we're going to start with the industry of Let's Play because when it first started, it was just people playing video games online. Yep. You know, more often than not, it started as playthroughs, not even with commentary. Yeah. But then, I think, personally, the industry really exploded when Game Grumps came to be. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Right they, the they molded the industry to be more professional and to be seen as more professional. For example, my husband here, Josh, works at a video game store, and any game that the Game Grumps have played, mm -hmm. they actually raised the price of that game. Because it, people are going to play the value goes up because they go by the value on the internet and stuff. They don't just make it up themselves. It, in a nationwide sense, the price goes up because Game Grumps played it. A fun example that they had was uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom was a five dollar game that raised to seventeen dollars in a week. <laughs> I love that game. Great. So, Game Grumps have molded the Let's Play industry to start being a business. You can monetize your videos and start making money. So, and also, people like uh, I know Achievement Hunter does it a lot. Uh, sponsored videos you know, help the, to bring in the money to them, make things more professional. The industry looks at Let's Players to be able to demo these games to people so that they know what's going on, so they can see it, because they know these Let's Players and know how they react to things. They're so like, well, if they like it, then I'll like it, but if they don't like it, then I'm not gonna like it. Yeah, exactly. So, in the sense, you can have a Let's Play channel be a business, and like any other business, it's gonna start with an idea. So, what we first came up with was our shtick, which is pineapples, all kinds of pineapple gaming. Why are we pineapple gaming? Because we like pineapples a lot. A lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but another example, um, some Let's Play channels don't really have a theme or shtick, like Game Grumps got really popular because Aaron was already famous as Eagle Raptor or Oni Plays. And, and John yeah. Tron in the beginning John already Tron. had a following of his own. And so they were able, they brought fans in, their name brought in people to begin with, and then as you gain people, more people just keep adding on. It, it, they're like rabbits fucking. Watch your language, you might be free. Children. Get one. <laughs> uh, so you use the one already. So uh, the point I was making though is that with the people with already pre-existent fame, we kind of forget that they have been, for, uh, for example, Aaron Hansen, he's been on Newgrounds for the longest time. Yep. So he still worked his way towards what he has now. So nothing is going to happen immediately. You're not going to upload a video and everyone's going to love it. In fact, some people might hate it and say really mean things to you. You just got to look past it. And my biggest stress about the whole thing is as long as you enjoy what you're doing, who cares? You know, just put it out on the internet. It's there for everyone to see. But the fact of the matter is that you guys had fun. So, um... Going into equipment, um, you're probably thinking, what should I buy? You know, what would be the best quality? In our experience, we have the Blue Snowball microphone, which, if I can pull up the picture, is it up there? I can't no, see. No, no, no. Pineapple. Don't you say no to me. Look at that. We're doing this not rehearsed at all. That's the way to host a panel. Right? Right? <laughs> it's the way to host a panel. Huh. Look at that. That's John's desk. John, why is that coming up? There it is. Okay. Look at it coming in. Get the literally jacket. All right. So that's a really tiny picture, but um, so these are two microphones that we usually recommend to people. To the left, you're going to see the blue snowball, which ranges around fifty to seventy dollars. Um. The one to the right, though, is the Blue Yeti, which is a little more expensive, but a little bit better quality. But a lot of people are broke. So How much in is our, the Blue Yeti, by the way? I'm sorry? How much is the Blue Yeti? The Blue Yeti the is Yeti? around 100 to 130 Yeah, that, that, that breaks the 100 mark, whereas the Snowball you can get for, for You can double find digits. a used one for 30 easy. Yeah. Like, if you just want to start out right away, 30 for a, a high-quality microphone. 
Yeah, and I've seen that like brand new ones go from sixty to uh, seventy. Exactly. Like brand new, and they're. And if you and there are headsets out there that uh, offer that are very cheap, but they offer very studio quality microphone uh, quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, the headset that I use is a Rover Beats Bravo. And it's a studio headset, but the microphone is so good in quality that you can't even tell the difference between a Blue Yeti and the microphone that I use. That's interesting. Yeah. And um, I've, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of the Let's Players use the headset microphone, especially when they have the face cam. Oh, yeah. Because that easy. way it doesn't have to be <laughs> in, in, in <laughs> That way it doesn't have to be in their way. So they, because like the real nice mics, you can have it away, but like for us, generally pretty close yeah. and it could be in the way of a camera and like the pipe dream is getting to like really professional equipment like a shotgun microphone which ranges god a couple like, hundred dollars for, for example game grumps just literally got they uh they were showing off their office they literally just got cranes that rig around from behind their couch so the mics hang above their, their faces and, so it's, it's not in their face but it's pointed at them from above so it's completely out of the way but that's something you get when you have money when yeah. you're making when, money when from you your videos. It, I would say. Um, but yeah. these are the two that we recommend um, for the, you know. The most part. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, and so with that as well, let's see if the picture will come up. Probably not. But view all photos. Can I do that? That's what I thought it would do, but it doesn't. Maybe it is doing it over. Set it on the clicky to go next, and then just forget it. There we Set go. It there it's going. All right. So pop filters. Uh, if you're not aware of what these are, these are little doohickeys that you attach to either a microphone stand or the microphone itself, and it's just something to put in front of your microphone to not make your P's and your T's and anything that your lips go forth. Because it'll so distort and peak and sound quite bad in my experience with sound editing. Think about someone you know that when they talk to you, you get the weather forecast instead of getting the news. Those moments where the water comes out, that's when the peaks come out. So any t you think that that's, you know, those people do it a lot, that happens a lot as you speak. There's a lot of T's, a lot of K's. Yeah. Kale, though, it's um, so these are roughly 20 bucks. They're not that expensive, and it's definitely worth investing in. Um, but if you can't afford the 20 bucks, um, a tip from Josh down there, a low budget pop filter would be uh, to get a wire clothes hanger and then stretch a stocking around it. Yep. And it would uh, provide the same, roughly the same quality. Um, so then next, did it go to the next one? Or yeah. a couple of dryer sheets around it. Or dryer That's sheets. That's what I tried out. You did do that yeah. once upon a time. So fresh, it's lovely time. fresh microphone, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, microphone will stink. Well, if, if, if you do a let's play like you're not doing face cam or whatever, so you got the mic real close to you, you your microphone will stink. <laughs> you have to you freshen that up every, every yeah, now and then. With the dryer sheet. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to use a webcam, but if you're somebody that wants to show your face on the internet, some people are into that, some people aren't. It's, um, you're putting on a different show, and yeah. instead of just completely doing audio and stuff, you can rely on visual gags. <laughs> you know, moving around and stuff. Especially if you're playing like horror games and stuff, you're probably going to want a face cam because <laughs> people are going to want to see you <laughs> reacting to, you know, Freddy coming Not out from much. the side. Remember Five Nights at Freddy's? I still look forward to Markiplier's Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I think it's over. Yeah, it's dead, like it Homes. can't be over. It's dead like Homestuck. It's Down. never. Homestuck's not dead. There's a panel like. Homestuck's not, not even our panel. Homestuck is dying though. No. I wish it was. But dead. not dead. Anyway. Not Close, dead. but not quite. <coughs> um, so That's what we have here, and I'm sorry the pictures are so small. I don't I know how to make them bigger. C920. Yep. Right? Yep. Uh, yes. Um, so I, I looked up an article for uh, these sources. This is apparently the best webcam. And yeah. The Logitech C922, which is their latest webcam. Come on in. I think that's. Oh, no, we're just not okay. You can look from inside too, though. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the, Log the Logitech <laughs> C922, which is their latest in video yeah, this streaming. This is 525. Quality. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's around the same price as a C920, but it offers uh, 720p, 60 frames per second video recorded. 
Sorry. We didn't have time to set this up at all, by the way. No, we we cannot practice. I don't know. Your mouse doesn't even work. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, it's not. It's not. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Duplicate. Okay. Because we're on the image. Yeah. All right. That's good enough, right? Yeah. Much better. And so. All right. So as we were saying. Yeah. So according to this, this is the best webcam, the C920. Um, the best budget webcam would be the Microsoft Life Cam HD 3000. Um, and you can see all over here with the pluses and minuses, the pros and cons of it. Um, and as you can see, it's twenty-seven dollars on Amazon. Like yeah. th it's nothing. Yeah, we like, actually have this one, the yeah. C five twenty-five. <laughs> we do have that one. I don't think we've even used it for pineapple gaming, but we just Josh and I just own these personally. Um, but yeah, um, if you're into webcams, we don't particularly do webcams. Um, if we stream, we might. Yeah, we, we usually do when we stream because then a lot of it is us just hanging out. Yeah. Because streaming can get exhausting very quickly. Um, but it, it's a different game when you're from webcam let's playing to not webcam let's playing. It, it's a different bag of tricks. And I think we do a lot better without the webcam. Um, I just like not we, we can We can be nice and, and dirty. We don't have to make sure we look all pretty and stuff for all the videos shooting. No, whatever. We look whatever. <laughs> sweatpants and, and dirty t shirts. Lots of sweatpants and dirty shirts. Sir? Because you can't even see it anyway, and then yeah. it takes up. It makes yeah. the game smaller. Yeah. And we well, like well, showing yeah. all of the game because yeah. we think the focus should be on the game with our commentary as a secondary piece of the content. So I will say though, if you can cut out, <laughs> like, if you can get a green screen if you're doing webcam, right. and green cut screen. out everything, yes, people so do it's that just quickly. you doing this stuff, that looks a lot better than having the square in the corner. I've been watching that, that channel for that one. I gotta get going for that one. That was okay. excellent. Have, Have a, good a one. lovely con. Ah, you too. We'll um, be around all weekend. Happy birthday, by the way. So, um, we got the equipment, and now we're going to go to the setup. Um, in our experience, we have the Elgato, um, which I actually didn't get the price for. You, you didn't put in the equipment. That's an equipment. That is an equipment. This, you know this is the excellent bridge. I'm not This is an equipment yet. and a setup section. Uh, the Elgato is an item that you got to get if you want to play console games or what have you um, that's not already on your computer. You're going to yeah. need this device, which connects... You connect the you connect HDMI from this your console and also the TV, the so it feeds the output in both sides. Yeah, you connect the HDMI from the console to the block that you see here, and then you get another HDMI cable to go out to your TV. And so then, with the Elgato, you download a program called uh, Game Capture HD, and you just run the program, and that's how you record your game footage. <coughs> from consoles and stuff. If, if you're just doing PC games, and your computer can handle running multiple softwares at the same time. Ours can't. No. Um, you can, no, you can just, uh, you, you can just do it on your PC, you don't need an extra item. But console games, I feel like, give you a lot more variety and it's not putting as much strain on your computer. Yeah. You can also um, have, if you're playing the game on a computer and you're recording on a different computer, run it through the game capture. Yep. That's what Achievement Hunter does. They still run through the Elgatos even though they're playing PC games. Because there, it's just a way to record. And it makes eases, it easier. Makes it easier on the computer. And it, it's just a constant setting that you have for your your peaks and your whatnots and your loses. Um, so with your cool new microphone, when you want to record your uh, your microphone audio, we download a free program called Audacity. Yep. It it'll get the job done. It's absolutely free. The, Don't even need to worry about it. But if you no want to be what fancy, you're doing in the audio world, Audacity. We yeah. I've used uh, Adobe Audition as well, but you pay for the same thing. You know, like obviously you can sound edit and you know get deeper into editing. But if you just want to record and mess with the volume to a level that's not going to peak, Audacity will be just fine for you. Um, <laughs> you <laughs> I, I, many a time with our audio, I would just normalize oh, no, yeah. I, and compress. Aud audio is sometimes one of your worst things, and you know, that that's one of why we talk about it so much in the that's equipment what it looks part. like. Because <laughs> if you have bad audio, you're not 
no one's going to want to stick around for it. Yeah. You could be playing the game to the, the greatest ability, unless you're <laughs> literally playing it to the greatest ability and speedrunning it, nobody's going to want to watch or listen to it because it's going to sound like garbage, it's going to hurt their ears. I prioritize sound quality over video quality yes. in the sense of webcams. That's why we don't do webcams because we focus solely on Less the processing microphone. power, less every, it, yeah. streamline. Um, so... Because audio is the most important. That's the one thing that slowed us down. Like, our first game capture wasn't an Elgato. It was a piece of garbage that we don't even talk about. I should have brought it. Dazzle. I don't no, even it's know. It's like what one it, of those like it was like a DVDs stick. into putting them on the computer, or whatever. It's terrible. It was a stick, and it had the composite the yellow, like wire. My first white capture phone. device. My first capture device was a Dazzle video recorder. Yeah, it was something like that one. One I'm of those. Sorry. Yeah, all I know no, it's about, terrible. All I know about. But it cost nothing, so I was like, yeah, I'll get this. And we played all of Resident Evil for. I, I played. Did I play? Did you? I, I played yeah. for moments, I believe. So with this stick. I loved it. We loved it in the beginning, but because of the stick, the game would lag, so I actually had to predict when everything was happening and, you know, predict what was happening and press the right buttons because, you know, they had the reaction commands. And I had to predict it before it came on the screen because by the time I pushed it when it came on the screen, it was already too late. It, it, it's it like playing a game where the uh, reaction the time of the game is just garbage. Like, I'm getting anxiety. Like, the frame rate's just, just a piece of crap. I'm getting anxiety. So, but yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> Resident Evil 4 is one of the worst games in the world. Right, right behind Kingdom Hearts. How dare you? Right behind. Oh, what you want to you you keep, you you keep yeah, people so here? So Shut the yeah, fuck up. You. Watch everybody just leave now. Thanks. If you enjoy it, have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Okay. Okay. I want to put out there that Resident Evil 4 wouldn't have been so bad if the game hadn't lagged because of our capture device. Like, it would have been fine. I like Kingdom Hearts. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I'm not, I'm a, I'll fight with you on a separate time. RE4 about did not stand up. <laughs> RE4 did not stand Four up. It was awesome. I remember loving it when it was on the GameCube and I was living in my buddy's house and I was living in the basement and that's what I would do for like six hours a day was play Resident Evil 4. It was a spectacular game. It does not stand up. Well, we are all too spoiled. Change the, change the, change the Resident Evil genre. Exactly, and I loved that change. I hated 1 through 3. I, I, you I, hate I don't, everything. I don't enjoy certain things. Okay. Well, Nemesis, Nemesis actually. I like Fire really Team. Like my first Resident Evil game. It scared yeah. the. It scared. It scared. It scared the feces out of my pants. Yeah, it's you know what? The problem I have with Monster Hunter, it's too delayed of a, like a reaction time when you're doing things. It doesn't feel like you're doing it itself. That's it don't, feels don't, like you're commanding. Don't play That's Castlevania like then, man. It, you didn't have to worry At least the older ones. Too bad. Dude, there was such a delay on which that one. Castle well, no, when, which when Castlevania? Which Castlevania? The older <laughs> ones. The, the older the older titles, one through Wait. three. No, like one, two, three. You NES. Know, I, I don't know. I liked, um, I, no, I think I only played them after like Super Nintendo. I like and later. So, we're going to move on. Because we, we have two pages we of this. We have plenty of time. So, this is only for the people who really care about having the same length of because we have an episode format, we upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and so if you care about the episode lengths being the same time, um, we literally just use the timer we have on our watches. You know, we set it for 18 minutes. It has a vibrate, so it doesn't ding ling ling and interrupt the sound. Um, yeah, it. I mean, these are, don't look for these watches because Pebble's out of business now. No, but you can probably get it for like four bucks. <laughs> for four bucks, I'll probably have use. Shirts on Amazon right now. But any, you can use your phone, just something that's quiet that'll give you a little vibrate when the time's up and you say, hey, next time on Pineapple Gaming, you know, or and next time on Game Drums, you know, because they probably do the same thing, but they have the fancy timer that, like, sits across the room and it's huge. Those cost, like, $200, if not more. So, we settle for the, the watch yeah. timer. <laughs> and, and the episode timing, and we'll talk more about it in the scheduling, but it's, it's about how YouTube works its magic. And so that changes a lot, and you adapt to that. But we'll talk more about that with this guy. It's algorithm is exactly. That's that's the scary A word. So this is as an editor, <laughs> this is my favorite thing of all time when it comes to let's play. God, Gabby loves this. This is my favorite thing in the world. In this binder, I have from March of last year, because that's when we started having a timesheet. So I write the date, the episode number, the name of the game that we're playing. And I have a start and end period, you know, because um, I use the watch for episode length time, but I actually watch the time on Audacity to see when in the sound 
we actually start the episode and I write that down. We start at, you know, zero, one, one, two, you know, whatever. And then when it ends, I write when it ends. And then all that space in between, because I edit these episodes, um, if we say, hey, Gabby, you know, throw in some stupid effects. I'm essentially Barry of Game Rooms, as well as most of the show. So, the kids don't get there. Drop the so balloons, Barry! Barry. Doesn't, <laughs> Barry doesn't edit anymore. The kids don't Wolf get job, Barry. With Barry, uh, Kevin, who's it now, Matt? Matt and Ryan. Matt and Ryan. You know, but everywhere in between, I'll have you know the time when we said to make this no end effect, and then in post, I will put that effect in. So I usually recommend this to people. Organization is key. <laughs> Zoom in for effect. It's so. beautiful. That logo is that part? Do you have the logo? Yeah, it's right here. It's great. No, I'm saying later. in the outline. Oh, we're we gonna talk about the logo at any point. I'll talk about the logo right now. You talk about the logo right now? Um, <laughs> this is just one thing, because I see the beautiful logo. If you have five bucks, you can go on Fiverr and get a logo made, and then that's your logo. So when people go to see your stuff, it's, it's yours. You're not just pulling things off the internet, stealing from other people. You have your own identity in a space. And that feels really good, no matter what you're doing. This one was made by a, a friend delightful of friend, Stefan. Yes. This is going on. Yeah. So he designed watch it. he designed the pineapple for us, and it yeah. has like a little because it started it from the pineapple emoji. That's how we got this whole inspiration. So the little white outline outside, you can't see it on this, but yeah. whatever. Um, and so, so, but but I've gotten other logos since then, and on Fiverr, five bucks, no problem. You get a nice simple logo, and then that's that's your unique <laughs> identity. You can put it on merchandise. Adds to your shit. That's we. I own that. We own that. We own that pineapple. And so... I don't own this pineapple. This is stealing. I think we got this from Dollar Tree. <laughs> that would make sense why your mother said that. That makes sense why my mom had one. <laughs> um, so I'm going to backtrack a little bit. when I was, I'm going to give myself a little toot of the horn, except it won't scroll ahead because you hate me and messed everything up. What did I do? Is it because I zoomed in? I guess so. So... With your videos, you have, you have, obviously, you can post them as is, but more people are going to be interested if you edit them. Um, have, you know, you can have effects if you want. It's just something I chose to do. But I personally use Adobe Products Premiere After Effects um, Photoshop, and that little thing in the bottom right corner is Media Encoder, which if you edit in bulk like I do, you just render out about 20 episodes and you know, and it'll just do its process, you let it go overnight, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. Because in Premiere, you can only export and render a video one at a time. So, again, if you do one at a time, Adobe uh, Premiere will be fine. But, um, you can, oh. The problem is the cloud has a, like a yearly subscription, yeah. and um, those with a budget have to stick with one video editing software. Mm -hmm. I stick with Magic's Movie Maker. Movie maker. Uh, I also had Sony Vegas Pro at one point. Yeah, and it's and and right now uh, currently it's on Steam for a hundred dollars and it's worth the hundred. Worth the buy. It's yeah. worth every penny uh, because I use it now for every single one of my videos, my vlogs, uh, my gameplay videos, in my my stream highlights, and every time I want to do a transition, I do the transition. I go to effects. I I. See the transition that I like. Yep. I put it in the video. And it's I there. time it, and it's just the it, it. After years of using Windows Movie Maker, yeah, yeah. I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah. Mm, after I feel years your pain. of using Windows Movie Maker on Windows XP, mind you, then using it on Windows Seven, I think it was time for a change. And Magic, <laughs> I get. I'm giving you an example. A little bit. I'm just like. <laughs> We're having more flashbacks. Right? right? Uh, but but, um, but this, using what? Magic's was like a big rock lifted off my shoulders as I was given freedom to do what I wanted. Yeah, and some programs as like that, you know, could provide the same um, abilities as these Adobe products. I'm just saying this is just what I use. I happen to get cloud um, by a miracle. <laughs> so. I edit, I design the graphics other than, you know, the pineapple that was made for us, but I, you know, I design all the thumbnails for our episodes and whatnot, and um, I also host. Except for the, seri the Kamen Rider series. Did I do the Kamen Rider series? The first one. 
I did Dragon Knight. I did. Um, well, yeah, but the first series. Yeah, the first series. The you first did. Comic mm -hmm. series. Yep. Because cool. you just really wanted to I do the really Comic Rider thing, and I was like, okay, I have work. Whatever. You <laughs> get to put pineapples on things. Though. It's fun to put pineapples on things because the way I it edit is. the thumbnails is I try to incorporate the pineapple um, into the. The, the picture as cleverly as possible. So for like, the last example I could think of is um, for Infamous 2, um, you know, he's, he's, it's the picture of him looking at his hands because he's got the power and everything. And I just put the pineapples in his hands and he just looks like he's looking at pineapples like, hey, you know. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's really fun. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do with the channel personally. Um, but yeah, so, oh, I guess oh, I could do that with my graphic oh, designing here. Um, so. Stefan did draw the heart pineapple. He he uh, altered. just altered the pineapple for us. But you know, with the little things like the pineapple pumpkin and the Christmas lights on the pineapple, I did that. Just little. But I do gotta stress: if you do add any like confetti or Christmas lights, you do have to get it from a public domain because, as we were saying earlier, don't just Google something and pull it off the internet because more than likely somebody owns it, and if they do find you. If you get big, if they do find you, they will get money. They will find you. Yeah, they, it's you don't want us to. If you want to be, <laughs> if you want to tell people that you're doing this and be proud of what you're doing, you have to do it yourself and not steal other people's work. And people make public domain stuff to put it out there because, I mean, how hard was it for somebody to make that confetti? Just Google Decently confetti hard, public but domain, but they wanted everybody to be able to enjoy it. It's kind of the same thing with music. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. Being background music like videos or, music or like music for like an outro card well, or an intro card. Yeah. YouTube actually has a beautiful um, database now for music. Um, I want to say if you go into your user settings, you can just access their database of music and it'll be um, determined because I think depending on who put out the music, you can either use it without even um, crediting them. Or, depending on where the public domain place exactly you or some of them might be like hey just throw us in your description and no, it's that simple in, in some cases scoured. you can contact like artists and stuff that you find on soundcloud yeah. or youtube or what have you to you know ask them you know, can i use your stuff in the video because i know that it happens We've more often than not they're cool with it just as long as you ask them because because you have been stuff on one of our episodes right <laughs> yeah and it was uh, a there's a local thing. orlando artist uh ben briggs and you know we're friends with him, so he we are like, hey, can we put your music in a game we're playing? Because he makes uh, remixes based off video game music. Like we love that song, can we put it in the game? Because the game music was not working, or just his was better, whatever it was. Um, and so you know, then all he's like, you just put credit, and we're like, sure, yep. we would love to credit you. And so, uh, for anybody new coming in, our two-year birthday is this Sunday, so I thought I'd just throw that in the presentation. Yay, we're going to be two! So... My birthday is just about to be that same day. Really? Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. You are our YouTube channel. You are our you th This is the physical embodiment right here. <laughs> um, so... Oh, jeez. So... Uh, what did you do? I put a Danny there because... Oh. The next section intros. is discussing intros. If you guys are interested in having an is introduction. It is it just no, it's the regular Game Grumps theme, but I was just throwing it in as an example. Hey, I'm grumps. Some I'm people not have. So and we're the game Everybody knows was, these guys. Come everybody's on. singing along. Exactly. <laughs> so, that is a nice. We didn't even check the volume. <laughs> so, if you, want, perfect. if you want an intro, it's up to you how long you want it to be. These guys have what? Five seconds? Five seconds. And you know who these guys are. People sing along to these five seconds. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. You know? And, 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 and they're at, they have an end credit. What? That's two. Oh. Bring your two credits playing. Some people have longer intros. Is that a Some intros are too long. That's funny. Yeah. Right. Everybody has a different taste. Super Best Friends certainly have more subscribers than we do, and I'm, as I'm making fun of their intro, but, you know, for me, I would have just skipped it. Yeah. Continue! I love this one. Even this one, this is when I'm getting a snack before we watch this. This is not that long. 
but this is still what I need in Snapchat. <laughs> Let me go back there. I think what I mostly wanted to stress on is don't stress too much on how long the intro is. Make something memorable. Make a catchy tune. Have a, you know, a, a memorable tune. Like what I'm example, trying to say. Like John Tron's intro. Oh, this so, is ours. I'm this so is glad ours is short. This is an intro from when ah, we first woo! started. Yeah, air horns because we're trash. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wait. Um, We're all so, trash. So, um, feel free, to, feel free to change your intro because this was actually our intro from when we first started in 2015. But if you notice now, we have a different thing, and it's the same thing. It's just a little, little something different to be relevant still. So, you know, just have something visual-wise. Make yourself known. You know, as we were saying earlier, be unique. So have your have your logos, have your everything, but also have things that are relevant to what you're doing as a gamer. So before we played a lot of Wii U games, so that's why the Wii U gamepad was there. But now, the most now we're playing a load of Switch games because I was raised with the gift of a Switch, and so uh, that's our to intro. To be now. fair, our currently running series are Plague Knight and uh, Infamous, and neither of those are on. <laughs> PlayStation 4 controllers Play don't night. have those screens that you can do. You can do the sensor? You got the sensor pad? Yeah, that's true. Maybe I'll do it. <laughs> Make a, the touchpad with the PlayStation oh, a white and zoom in. I mean, you love a good project. <laughs> it's it's fun to do. I, I'm an editor, so I like doing these kinds no, of things. We don't things. have anything to plan for for a while after this. But, shh, we'll discuss that later. Let's celebrate our birthday. Um, so, going into the consoles that we use to play our games. It depends on who you are as a gamer, but what you use to play PC, PS4, Xbox, you know, like keep in mind that certain systems are going to get a certain audience. So for example, if you're playing a retro game, Super Nintendo, you know, any of those things, that's going to get a certain audience, but also with um, current consoles, and even games that aren't even out yet, you're going to get an audience as well. So just be aware and don't be discouraged if you upload Super Mario World and not a lot of people watch it, but then you upload Crash Bandicoot Remastered and much more, many more people watch that. It's, a, a lot of it depends on the, uh, you know, people's tastes. Like, um, I watch a lot of Achievement Hunter and Let's Play. They play a lot of GTA and uh, they're playing a lot of Rainbow Six right now. Josh and Gabby don't watch that. They're not interested in those games. It's a, it's a matter of taste. Um, I think Jamie plays more than anything now. That I find that I mean, obvious. <laughs> but um, so when it I mentioned Crash Bandicoot and I actually was graced with an early copy of Crash Bandicoot, so I streamed that to Twitch, and um, people flooded it because you know this game wasn't out yet and I just wanted to touch base on how to get an early uh, copy of a video game so you know you can visit your local and we got banned. <coughs> banned. Banned. for 20 for 24 hours and it's not even a big deal no <laughs> but just so you know you're not supposed to you're not supposed to um, I'll, I'll unless I'll say that unless it's disclaimer. <laughs> that's true Unless if you're a bigger Let's Play channel and you get a review copy, which is a thing, they can send you copies early to review and whatnot, and that's... That's back to that business thing we were talking about back before, is that um, you get the benefit of being able to put that content out early, yep. the developers get that benefit of you already have an audience for them to market to, here's free marketing. You play the game because you want to play the game, we're giving you the game a couple of days early and everybody wins. It's a shame that Bethesda stopped doing that. I mean, Fallout 4 is a bug fest. No, it is a bug fest now. I'm really disappointed with it. I see when they gave us a new copy of a game that it's really awkward. They're like, yeah, it's just not, not that good. Yeah, yeah because that, that is one thing. Especially with games nowadays where they, you know, probably upload a day one patch. You know, I know when I got Crash Bandicoot, a lot of things were wrong, and still are. But some things were fixed with a day one patch, but we have that blessing nowadays um, but I did want to touch base if you do want a game early and you don't intend to stream it and get banned from Twitch you can record early episodes for example check yeah. out your local mom and pop shops for real like they'll get games in early quite often like 
going to GameStop, you know, they're not going to have it. But depending on the shop you go to, you got to hunt a little bit for them, admittedly. But there's a good chance you'll get something early. And you can use that to your advantage as well. And that's all I wanted to touch base on that, I guess. I mean, I did talk about the Crash Bandicoot stream I had on Twitch that we got there. Transition. <laughs> But yeah, so let's players versus Twitch streamers. Yeah, well, so there is a difference between the two. You can do both, but when you say you're a let's player, people are gonna say you know YouTube. There, when you say you're a Twitch streamer, they're obviously gonna think Twitch. But you know you can do both, but they, they're, they're they're separate communities in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. There's a lot of overlaps, but it's more when either side when, when you get big doing whichever one it is you then start overlapping because people are going to watch you no matter where you are. Might as well exactly. be everywhere. Yeah. Um, so, but in the beginning, you're going to encounter two different communities. So if you're trying to do both, and you're trying to interact with people from those two different communities, it might be harder <coughs> first. Yeah. So Because they're not going to be the same necessarily. So That's what we did. Yeah, but then we, we tried. We tried doing, because once upon a time, John lived with us. And so it was much easier to just be like, hey, you want to play a game? Let's go. So... You know, we tried doing both, but we just didn't get as much reception on Twitch, so we kind of just, you know... Twitch is a very um, community-based thing. Exactly. And some people like watching you live, you know? Some yeah. people don't care for the stupid little effects that you throw in. And, um... They, li they, they like, um... Back to the whole different audience thing, basically. Yeah, it, it, it's a different audience. It's a different game. But I wouldn't stress on doing both at the same time. It's not going to make you any more popular. It's not. It, if anything, Though it's going to be say, a bigger burden on your back. I will say streaming, I would recommend getting a webcam more than not. Stream Streaming is more popular with a webcam. Yeah. I, I you're you're, you're going to have a tougher time in the beginning. You could do it, and plenty of people do it. Uh, I streamed without a webcam the other day just because I was playing Hitman. Yeah, I was like, you whatever. were just having fun with it. I yeah. didn't have a webcam to hook up to the PS4. Sorry, I'm making sure that we're touching base on everything here. Oh, with us, um, I'm pretty sure everyone's aware at this point, but just in case no one is, with YouTube, you do have the power to schedule your videos. So when I said earlier, I, I edit in bulk, I also upload in bulk. I will upload those 20 episodes as soon as I'm done <laughs> rendering them all out, and then the, you get this beautiful option to schedule them for your date and time that you want it to go live to the internet. And so, you know, we upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's just at a god at 4.30. 4.30. <laughs> 4 4 but yeah, like an absolute, because I remember... Right at 4.30, everybody should be feeling really good. Why not? You <laughs> can't do... Like we try. <laughs> but no, but, but you don't need to be distracted at that time. You're doing something else. So by 4.30, that's when you're, you're looking ready. for the video. Because we're trash. But um, so, yeah, before we got that tool to upload and schedule your videos, I remember stressing about how long it's going to take to upload and when it would be live, and it was just a nightmare. It just, it just happens. I'm very glad YouTube did that, because for me, as the editor and uploader and all that, it's just... It made my life so much easier, and I just wanted to stress that, that you do have that tool and utilize it. Um, so, speaking of scheduling, um, do what works best for you. Because I'm going to say right now, when we first started, we tried to be Game Grumps, and we tried to upload a video every single day, and it didn't work out. Because, you know, Game Grumps will sit in their office and record for eight hours they're, at a time. They're able every to day. treat it like a job. Um, we, because they're either their occupations, we're able to support them better with giving them more free time, or they had money in other ways, and that's how you'll find a lot of them that, that get their success quick, because they just have money laying around. So they can just sit around and stream, and then everybody's watching them anyway, because they're always on. Yeah, so um, monetized videos are going to be uploaded yeah. more often because they're getting paid to do this. Not only is it more motivating, but at your regular job, you don't have to work as hard to make your bills. So and, I just don't like, want I just want to put out there, do not try to upload every single day. Just don't do it. It's gonna but ruin your life. Pick a schedule and stick to it. Yes. Don't yes. don't just upload it random because nobody's gonna be able to keep track of that. When you actually get people who are following along, they're gonna say, Okay, it's Friday, I know I can watch a pineapple gaming video at five when I get off work. Exactly. So as long as you have a schedule, with a, schedule. A, a, a secure schedule, people who are following you will know when your content is coming out. 
And so then, um, yeah, that's it for scheduling. Um, otherwise, uh, something that we something that we need to work. Oh, that's wow, we had a graphic for that. We had a graphic there that for was. that. So advertise yourself, and this is something we need to work on too. But. The only way people are going to know you exist is if you put yourself out there. So even if it's a, I wouldn't say don't spam, but every now and then throw yourself out there. Hey, Pineapple Gaming is playing Yoshi's Wooly World. Um, Upload that to a subreddit. You know what I mean? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all this, as, me, as much social media as you can get your hands on, at least one regular I, post. Don't if, if I could grab this, because I recently had a conversation with Mark of the Sea okay. about this very thing. Okay. Um, and Mark of the Sea, the local artist in Orlando, and he does, he's been doing this for years, so he sees his things change. Um, and the biggest thing he said is, number one, you're going to have to sink money into it. If you want other people to see it, if you want to reach people that just aren't, aren't just your friends, you're going to have to put money into it because that's what Facebook wants to do. And same thing with Twitter and everything. But the second best way to do it is to set up a group. Make your community that you're making the content for a group. Um, like for Mark of the Sea, he has the Mark of the Sea advisory board. And he's opening that up more now. It used to be more of a private thing, but he's opening it up more now. Because in a group, if everybody's in that group, when you post, they get a notification every time. They see. So there's less chance of Facebook hiding it in all the other trash that's on Facebook every day. Because it's a lot of stuff that you'll see. And you'll miss people's stuff. Yep. And so the groups is... From what I'm told, from people who are in the, the doing this right now, is the best way to spread the word. Which is the thing that we just have a chance to talk about. We just about. need it's, to do. I gotta tell you guys about what I'm talking about. For Reddit, what subreddits do you recommend? John? Any of them. Anything. <laughs> pick, pick anything that you can do. Any tag that you would use on YouTube for your SEO. So like, and if there's a subreddit for the game you're playing, there. That subreddit. Anything that you can think of, do a r slash whatever and if there's a Literally. subreddit there check their sidebar see if you can advertise and if they don't have any rules against it just post a bunch of stuff i know that the twitch um forums uh, the twitch there's, reddit the twitch subreddit doesn't allow advertising anymore more official ones will stop you from doing it but there'll be ones for like what's a good example so Reddit has you like you got to imagine how how massive Reddit is. Um, mm -hmm. They they mentioned like uh, the specific uh, video games uh, subreddit, but you also have to maybe go uh, go with the publisher or something. Like if you want to do like a Final Fantasy game, you don't have to just go through Final Fantasy board. You may do a like, Square Enix. Through Square Enix. If, if there's a Square Enix board, or uh, even specifically, if we're saying Final Fantasy, there may be a specific Final Fantasy board for that Final Fantasy game. Like 15. Exactly. I mean, so you could have a Final Fantasy 15 board. There might just be a Final Fantasy board, and then there's Square. <laughs> so there's a lot. There's a lot of places, but it's all about making sure you read the rules. I'm yeah. actually just so any, like, anything you can find, like the common, like to use Common Rider as an example, because I can't think of anything else. Um, <laughs> the official Common Rider subreddit is going to have a rule against advertising, but the Common Rider Gaim subreddit is run by some hoo ha who really likes Gaim, so you can advertise all you want on there, and there's plenty of people who will subscribe to that, so you'll see these things. Um, and then another thing with advertising that we really like and I think really makes us uh, look real good mm. uh, is when you're talking to somebody, especially like in this con setting, this con as I talk to you people today show. after this, business we have business cards. <laughs> and um, business cards, you can do it one of two ways. If you're a single person, I think the easiest way is to do it like a professional business card. Mm -hmm. This is Pineapple Gaming, John Blah Blah, I'm my last name. <laughs> and you know, have contact info and stuff and make it look more professional like that. But since we're a duo and we don't put any names or anything, I like to have it a little more bold so that when I leave it out at a con table, as you'll see around this weekend, people will see it and go, what's this with the pineapple on it? Oh, there's a website I can go to. Maybe I'll go to it later, because that's happened to me. And so I have the, my common writer stuff on the other side, and I have pineapple gaming on this side. I'll have my cover music stuff on it. And so yeah, so she's gonna have pineapple gaming and then recover it. music stuff. It costs money. And it's simple advertising. And when you talk to somebody and tell them about your thing, so that they don't forget what your conversation, you hand them a business card. And as long as there's some way to contact you, you're not so much handing them information; you're handing them a memory. This is something physical that they're gonna touch. They're gonna put it in their wallet when they empty their wallet in a month. They're gonna see and go, yeah, Oh yeah, I should check that out. Yeah, I'm I bored. Hmm? 
the guy from the shuttle who passed in your car. I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. Excellent. Did you didn't realize you did it? No. I think Josh gave him the card. Might have been Josh. Oh, was it Josh? <laughs> Josh did it. See? It was Josh. Not even someone in your, in your team. I didn't even hand one to Kiri as they were by. But yeah, so business cards are, are an easy thing. You can find real discounts on like Vista Print and stuff That's where you're where just paying ours. shipping. Um, um, I do recommend that you design your own. Like, mm -hmm. that's not something that Vista Print made for us. We design our business card logos and everything. You know, obviously, like I said earlier, I only use Adobe products like Photoshop, so that's accessible to me. But if not, you know, you can contact somebody and have them make it for you, probably for an affordable price. So, where are you going? Get the business cards out. I'm going to hand them out. Oh, okay. What about Vistaprint? We, we mentioned Vistaprint. Oh, we were saying design, because Vistaprint allows you to design your own thing yeah. and then put it on the card. And I'm saying do that. Because, I mean, Vistaprint, you know, all they have, whatever they have is public domain, but somebody else might use that. And that lowers your uniqueness level. And so, you know, make something that people will know is you. That's the biggest thing that I will stress in this entire panel is... Be unique, be you, don't try to do things to impress people because the only way you're going to impress people is when you find the audience that likes you for you. Because then you're having fun. And you, yeah, have fun. Like don't, don't do this as a job until you're making money. I mean, let's be real. What's up? Oh, you were, oh, I thought you were raising your hand for a question. No, I'm but yeah. Kidding. Oh, you're, you're over there taking pictures. I, I like to make sure that I remember. But um, so that's it for our whole little guideline of tips and tricks on how to be a let's play. That, that's let's play, but yeah, that final part, have fun. And just have fun, put it out there, people are going to enjoy it. Um, game Grumps always say that they forget where they are sometimes because they're just playing games with their buddy. And that's, and Gabby and I are the same way when we're enjoying a game. Um, we're just sitting there hanging out playing video games. And that doesn't feel like work. And so when you do this and eventually it picks up and people see it because eventually somebody's going to see it because new people are born every day. Yep. So just keep putting it out there and when it's not fun anymore, stop doing it. Do something else. Do something else. Or do something do at more the same things time. And do things at the same time, exactly. Because no one is going to know you if you don't do anything. But that is... Somebody's supposed to tell us to stop. Somebody's supposed to tell us at five Somebody's minutes, supposed to tell us to get out because somebody got, else is here now. But we still got ten minutes. I was gonna say we still got. I thought no, it was I like think forty-five. We have, I no, think we have at fifty. Five. Yeah, you're huh? done now. Yeah, well, there's a ten minute transition period. Technically speaking, we're well, supposed to stop right now. But well, technically we've stopped. But if anybody has questions, we're open to them as well. I, so I have a couple them. business cards. I thought I was going to hand them out to everybody, but I did not expect as many of you to be here. Thank you all for coming. I have some. I'll see you all. We'll be here all weekend. Feel free to find us. Feel free to say hi. Woo!